All right, everybody, and welcome to a daily space weather supplemental. Today we're going to cover a coronal mass ejection as well as a coronal mass ejection watch for Earth-facing coronal mass ejections. First, some imagery of the closest star, the local yellow dwarf, El Sol, whatever you'd like to call it. And while we were doing this morning's daily space weather video, a coronal mass ejection was occurring. So some of the filamentary release appears to have originated from up there. And we see a great example of an equatorial coronal mass ejection release. Here's a, a clip from this morning's video. So if you look at this portion right here, you're going to see a building bit of plasma right there. There is a 100% chance that's going to eject at least part of it. And so there you can see the forecast. So what we're looking at there is the view from Stereo A, folks. That's at Lagrange point 0.5, Lagrangian point 0.5, whatever you'd like to call it. And that's a coronal mass ejection forecast for you. So uh, we haven't documented too much of this yet as it's fairly new to the channel. And again, we are streaming live right now, actually. So we are back. Twitch and let me get off the screen to get the best possible imagery here at the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. So you can see this coronal mass ejection releasing here. Uh, this is a bit of a noteworthy coronal mass ejection in that one, it is not Earth facing. Earth is off in this direction. Two, it could cause additional coronal mass ejections or maybe be associated with them if not causal. Uh, and so you see this area here, this is the this is the cause of the current coronal mass ejection watch for Earth-directed coronal mass ejections. Don't be surprised to see us reporting soon on that ejecting as well, and we'll provide additional an analysis of that. It's also noteworthy in that you can see the way that this is very dense, and it's headed right down the equatorial plane here. So the sun's equator is like right about here. That's also the around the ecliptic plane where all the planets orbit on a disk someplace around that area. And uh, you can see the way this one happens to be just right on the equatorial plane there. And that is a kind of coronal mass ejection that if it were Earth facing, it would be a significant geomagnetic affect. And let's show you some more views here. Here is the difference imagery, which is just the pixels subtracted from pixels. And I would also note that whatever this object is here appears to be possibly interacting with the plasma a little bit. Whatever it is, it's very large. And we're seeing like a tail there of missing plasma as if that object is quite close to the sun. So I don't know about that one, folks. That one is above me. Now, Stereo A is claiming that that object there is Jupiter how Jupiter would be moving while on the opposite side of the Sun in the same direction the Earth orbits from left to right from Stereo A's imagery, I have no idea. But just reporting on the facts, folks. So now let's take a look at the Lasco C2, which is actually located here at Lagrangian Point 1 on the SOHO spacecraft. And we don't really see very much of a uh, of a halo here. Again, this coronal mass ejection is on the opposite side of the sun, but we wanted to cover it because of the density of it as well as the, the trajectory of it right on the equatorial plane. So here's Alaska C3 also located at Lagrange Point 1, and we don't really see any evidence of that yet. We'll cover it on tomorrow's daily space weather video. Again, there's Alaska C2. And let's bring up the Stereo A imagery before we close things out. I just wanted to show that and get some good graphics on the channel for this one. A uh, great example of an equatorial coronal mass ejection. Oftentimes, we'll see one come out in this direction and in this direction and just stay off of the equatorial plane entirely. Uh, this one certainly looks like it's headed almost perfectly straight down the equatorial plane. And who knows, perhaps that'll be 
directed toward Mercury or something? I really have no idea. But in any case, there's the imagery. Again, we are on watch for additional coronal mass ejections from this one. And that's, of course, more important than the one that is not Earth-facing. And let's bring up some additional imagery to close things out here. How about a different wavelength? We'll pick on the 335 angstroms. And that's about it. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash -a mash reminding you to stare at the sun, don't drink, but if you do, don't drive. Welcoming you to the neo-renaissance and wishing that solar wind be at your back. <laughs>